how about that cigar? How about that cigar? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Drew Estate Cigar Studios for episode 138 of How About That Cigar Live. Thank you so much for joining us live on Facebook, live on YouTube. And for those of you listening after the fact on the audio podcast, thank you so much for listening while you drive down the road, work out, whatever it is you do when you listen to your favorite audio podcast. Thank you so much for making How About That Cigar part of your regular podcast rotation. And as always, we are here in the Drew Estate Cigar Studios. And let's remind everybody once again about the beautiful new Drew Estate 20 Acre Farm, a complex and medium bodied cigar. 20 Acre Farm is built using a velvety Ecuadorian Connecticut shade grown wrapper, a sun grown Habano binder, a filler blend of Nicaraguan tobaccos from Esteli and Jalapa blended with the opulent and majestic Florida sun grown leaf available to all premium cigar retailers nationwide beginning in early December. The ultra-premium 20-acre farm cigars will be available in beautiful 20-count boxes introduced in a 6x52 Toro, a 5-and-a-quarter by 54 Robusto, and a 6x60 Gordito. For more info, please visit DrewEstate.com. I think your shirt is opulent. It, my shirt is very opulent. I, I, I can't really, you know, I got the, got the reindeer over here. I got, yeah, this is my, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. I love Christmas time. No apologies. I'm the I'm the weirdo who starts listening to Christmas music in October. True story. I am that weirdo. He is. And I embrace it. So he also you're you're like the guy that wears flair. You know. Uh you I were, do I yeah. Uh, yeah. I try to I try to, you know, hold hold off on the flair a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to overdo it on the flair. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to do 37 pieces of flair. I've been meaning to talk to you about the bedazzling <laughs> on your ass that is getting out of control. Um, so uh, real quick, uh, both our teams won during this NFL week. Uh, so the Vikings won on Thursday night. Uh, the Packers, the Packers tried really hard to lose yesterday to the Bears, but they managed to actually end up winning pretty by a pretty fair margin. Uh, the Wilds. You know, the hockey season's been going really well. Minnesota's been playing fantastic hockey. Uh, We we won eight in a row, and then all of a sudden we lost two in a row. So we've lost our last two. They're off tonight. They're back on again tomorrow. Uh, But I'm not worried about two losses in a row. Uh, One of those losses was Kakinen in the net, and he's, you know, he's he's fine. Uh, I'd rather have Talbot in net any day. Uh, you know, so, but the wild have been playing great and we're hoping that that trend continues, uh, cause they mostly seem to be healthy and they seem to have pretty good, uh, you know, chemistry. They're playing yeah. pretty well together. Um, so guys, as always, while you are live with us, while you're watching, join us in the comments, uh, let us know what you're smoking and drinking along with us. We're going to be doing some awesome pairings coming up in just a few minutes. We have some fantastic guests on the show, um, and we're going to get into – we have actually one giveaway that we're going to um, give away tonight on the show, and then we have another one that is ongoing on HowAboutThatCigar.com that we will remind you guys about uh, if you haven't had a chance to enter that yet. So let's – Let's get into this. Let's do it. Let's let's bring on our special guests. And as always, on How About That Cigar Live, special guests are brought to you by Corona Cigar Company and CoronaCigar.com, the Internet's largest and easiest to use virtual cigar store. Corona Cigar Company offers you the finest handmade cigars, humidors, and cigar accessories at the absolute lowest possible price. You'll also find unique and limited cigars containing Florida sun-grown tobacco. As a proud American, president and founder of Corona Cigar Company, Jeff Borshowitz believed it was possible to bring cigar tobacco farming back to Florida. At Corona Cigar Company and CoronaCigar.com, you'll find the best selection anywhere in the world of cigars containing this special Florida sun-grown tobacco. If you live in Florida or are just visiting, be sure to visit any of the great Corona Cigar locations in downtown Orlando, Sand Lake, Lake Mary, and also the Davidoff of Geneva Lounge in Tampa. For more info on all of that, please visit coronacigar.com and floridasungrown.com. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you would please put your hands together and welcome to episode 138 for Pairing Roulette Holiday Edition from Cigar Dojo, we have none other than Eric Gatormson and Jordan Gatormson from Cigar Dojo. What's up, boys? Gentlemen. Hello. (laughs) We're ready to rock and roll. 
Uh, well, and there doing... are, Eric is already talking trash. We're, yeah. How's that? He... Wild so <laughs> <laughs> He's talking <laughs> trash about our wild. They're living well, on. Can, they're I... living on borrowed time, boys. Oh, yeah. borrowed time. Uh, yep. Well, we'll see. You don't want to I'm be trying... hot at the beginning of the season, guys. It's, that's not a good sign. It's not a good. Well, sign. that's, so, like, that's mid, typically what the 2000s. wild do. <laughs> yeah, typically the wild are really good early in the season, and then they suck for a while, and then they make it into the playoffs and lose in the first round. That's, that's what we're hoping for. That's exactly <laughs> what you're hoping for. Yep. No, no. Well, guys, we thank you so much for being on yeah. Pairing Roulette. This is uh, this is kind of a fun little experiment that we that we did for the first time about six or eight months ago, and uh, we had a good time doing it. And and thought about doing a holiday edition. And I said, let's get the guys from Cigar Dojo on. And little did you know when I sent you that email, it's like you've got a you've got a shopping list and a bunch of work to do. So thank you guys for being on with us. This is the most expensive show I've ever yeah, been they on. They made us go find like <laughs> Buffalo Trace NT collection. Like, what? I can't even normally get that. And yeah. I have to I have to share this with you guys because in a lot of places, um, you know, certain types of bourbons are highly sought after, super rare, you know, for whatever reason. But um there in Minnesota, you can't get hardly anything. And if you can, it's exorbitantly priced. There's a shop just down the road from my house that had the, you know, they've got the fancy case with all the high dollar stuff in there. They had a bottle of Pappy 15 for $900. That's actually not too bad compared to some places. Yeah. For- <laughs> and a bottle, of, and a bottle of Weller Antique for $400. Now that's just obnoxious. That's obnoxious. That's a, yeah, that's, yeah. That's so, obnoxious. I that's- kind of wish they would switch to, they, they would, they frown on doing that. And I kind of, at this point, it's, Nobody agrees with me on this, but like I kind of wish they would switch to just letting all liquor stores charge whatever they want, drive yeah. some competition that might actually lower it. I feel yeah. like plus it might it might make like all these uh, the black market right. just kind of die. Yeah, that dies off, and then you're just the liquor stores are competing with each other. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I hope for too. But we'll I don't know we'll see how it goes. So as our viewers know, the last time we did pairing roulette, basically we have a we have a spinning wheel with wrapper leaves on it so we select different cigars from our humidors that have this particular kind of wrapper leaf and then we have a, another uh roulette wheel with uh beverages and this time being christmas uh not that you can tell from my shirt but this is christmas time so we wanted to do um beverages that you would typically have in your house around the holidays and so we've got um, we've got champagne for new year's. We've got, you know, stuff like cranberry juice and red wine and eggnog and bourbon, you know, bourbon's kind of a, you know, a regular thing, but you know, when we have people around our house for the holidays and stuff like that, what are the beverages that we're typically going to have during the holidays? So these are the ones we put on the wheel this time around. Absolutely. And Garrett found some very good. So Garrett yeah. found some very cool non-alcoholic options for those of you out there who want, I went to total wine not a sponsor and I, sponsor. I you know i said what are the chances you guys have you know non-alcoholic whiskey or bourbon and this woman was like oh well we do and i was like you're kidding and so she brought me over to this little section and there was a you know a few different selections i mean they have tequila and rum and um all you know uh whiskey they had like four or five and she was like, these two are our best sellers for the non-alcoholic whiskeys. And uh, Matt and I um, open up a couple of these bottles. Yeah. One, not so good. Mm-mm. Not so good at all. Nope. The other one smelled like mushrooms. Yeah. And tasted like feet. like the bottom of grandma's purse. Yeah. <laughs> it was gross. Um, and the one that I'm going to be going with today is uh, it's, it's decent in flavor but it doesn't taste like whiskey doesn't taste like whiskey but it actually has a decent flavor to it so and my my red wine tastes like red wine it does yeah so let's let's jump right off uh with our holiday pairings and jordan let's start with you and i'm going to oh, share yeah. the screen get the roulette wheels up on the screen all right so Fancy. for your first beverage jordan what Ooh. do I got? Eggnog. Come on. Come on, eggnog. <laughs> oh. oh, you're going to get this. You got. Oh, 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 oh it's what a tie. Is it? oh, it's, it, I've no, been drinking it, both? 
No, it's to mix red wine juice. and cranberry juice. Oh, it's just oh. mix them. It's you oh. could mix them, I suppose. No, but that's just barely them. over the line on cranberry juice. There you go, Jordan. No. You can uh, you can show the 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 studio or the audience what you got there. We're working with Simple Truth, 100 cranberry juice. Oh, now so that's it's not uh, easy to find. 100. You got the real deal. Juice. It's actual cranberry juice. It's not uh, the cocktail. Not, it's not cranberries. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not jacking around here. It's the, nice. This is legit. Nice. From concentrate, it says. Okay. Well, legitness. All right. Not legit. So, you, Jordan, you are going to pair that with a cigar that has a. Oh wait, I got the same wheel. And you got to share. You're gonna out. pair that with. You're gonna pair cranberry right. juice with cranberry. No, juice. sorry. Hold on one second. I had the same. I had, cigar. I had the same <laughs> wheel. Uh, give me one sec here. Acid cran. Technical difficulties. It's all right. It's all, it's all good. All right. Here we go. Wrappers. And then, uh, yep. Nope. Oh, there we go. All right. You are going to pair that with. <gasps> oh, okay. is it going to go over again? No. Nope. Oh, it's come good. on. Well, I can't, I can't see what that says. Broadleaf. Broadleaf. Oh, you oh, lucky okay. dog. All right. That lucky <laughs> actually doesn't sound like the worst pairing for this. No, it I got uh, you the a Drew Estate, you're the rat. Oh, very nice. Hard cigar to uh, unwrap, but once you get going, it's <laughs> tasty as well. Yeah, that, that gold foil is they definitely make you work for it, but it's good stuff <laughs> underneath. All right, I don't know uh, who, who decided how they did that gold foil, but they should be fired. <laughs> yeah, was. It, was, yeah, it was Jack, it was, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> it was all Jack. <laughs> um, all right, Eric, let's uh, yes. let's get you into a beverage. So we're clicking the wheel for you. Come on, bourbon. Come on, bourbon. Now, if we both no, get cranberry juice, if you get the same again. beverage, we're going to choose something oh, different yeah, for you. you. Do. Uh, yeah, I got to redo. What is it with cranberry juice? We all got like bladder infections. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it loves cranberry juice. Let's, 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 let's try it again. This is crazy. This is super it's random. Stinking. Yeah, it's super cranberry random, juice. apparently. It demands cranberry. Here we go. Oh, here we, go. here we go. Here we go. This time. Oh, it's, it's coming towards the bus. Oh, it was so close. Oh, that sounds terrible. All right, you got champagne. And so, right, what, so uh, what champagne do you have here? Now, you know what? You, got, you guys realize that... You can only really call something champagne if it's literally from, from that's champagne. champagne. That's Champagne-y. correct. France. My champagne so, is not from the Champagne region. No, and me, neither's mine. I have this uh, Jefflin uh, Brut. It's a Sermonte de Burgundy. So it's supposed to be pretty good. Um, so okay, there you go. That's what I've got. I, okay. I've, oh. I'm going to probably break some studio lights doing this, right? And this thing shoots out of here. You didn't pre -open. That would be interesting. No, yeah, I didn't pre-open it. That's the fun of it. <laughs> All right. While you're opening it. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this might take spin me. spin the wheel for your cigar. But you're going to have to get this part on, on film because this is going to be interesting. Oh, oh, I'm, not, I'm not sharing the screen. So you'll you'll get another spin. Don't, don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Here we go. See your skills. All right. You guys ready for this? Do it. Do this right. could be this could make for <laughs> Jordan. I want to Jordan has like in the studio we have like forty thousand dollars worth of Phillips Hue lights. <laughs> so I gotta how to make sure I aim this angle yeah. <laughs> so that I don't kill anything. All right, here we go. Oh! Oh! Hey, oh, 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 that was well done nice. by me. Did not right. spill a drop. Oh, not a drop. I did not break any Phillips Hue lights. That's good. All right. While you are pouring, let's spin your cigar wheel. Habano. Habano. Oh, for that. I think the Connecticut would have been better, but yeah, you, you got a right. decent one. Connecticut and champagne is fantastic together. I've got the... Um, the taser oh very nice i just protocol just finished one cigar dojo, dojo taser. taser that's a very nice, nice. Cigar. great cigar i think this could be an okay pairing and matt mallet you were smoking that before the show i was yeah that well, was my pregame cigar i mean that all right better, would you? garrett 
you are going to drink eggnog. Come on, eggnog. <laughs> Come on, eggnog. Ooh. Ooh, I'm going to be champagne. You son of a gun. And what is yours called again? It's called. Uh, so this is the Rondell. And uh... they were they were a great band in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> Shadu Bedu. Um, I've had this before, and it is actually Mo very Motown. Very good. Nice. So that's a non-alcoholic, or or what? Correct. Okay. All right, and your wrapper leaf will be better not be Habano. Or I'm calling somebody. Ooh, looks like San Andres. We're gonna do a little crook and crown. Oh, the crook of the crow from uh, Stolen Throne Cigars. Yep. Very nice cigar. Toothy as all get out. All right, so mine is going to be, let me get this back on the screen. My beverage to start will be no eggnog. <laughs> no eggnog. Red wine. And my red wine is, I just opened this bottle this evening uh, earlier, and there's some gone because I gave a couple glasses to my wife. This is Santa Carolina from Chile. It is Carmenier from 2013. Now, I think the question that everybody wants answered, Matt, is why is the UPC code X'd out on that bottle? I have no idea. It was a gift. Ah, Black I market. think it's yeah. yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's it's a fake. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> I I like wine, but I'm not. Um. Uh, I'm not overly connoisseurish. But I'm a I'm a big wine guy. I it's growing on me. I'm I'm trying to learn. There's too and much to learn. I'm so I'm not I'm no expert, but I love it. I have wine five out of the seven nights a week. So Hello. there's my wine. That's a and nice my... looking wine glass you got there, though. It is. Yeah, we don't skimp on the wine glasses. Good. We, it's uh, a beaut. We definitely like our wine glasses. Um, <laughs> and the wine that goes in them. So what my wrapper smoke? leaf is going to be to start. Let's see what would be a terrible pairing with that actually red wine goes with almost all those yeah, not a connecticut not a connecticut that would not be oh God. that's probably the worst, <laughs> worst one. <laughs> shoot hey, that's my guess that's my guess the wheel has spoken the wheel has spoken the wheel has spoken and i am i am not going to i'm not going to argue with the wheel the wheel has spoken so i'll get my cigar fired up my connecticut shade cigar is the adventura Queen's Pearl Lancero. That's a good cigar. A good cigar. Oh, Lancero yeah, version. Nice huh? size, dude. Lancero nice. is redonkulous. Mm. So while we are getting into our pairings and getting started with this, um, let's jump into just some little bit of holiday cheer for everybody. So... Um, what is, and we'll start with Eric on this one. What is the okay. weirdest gift you've ever received? Where you open the box and you're like, what? And you have to keep a straight face, like to not, you know, could could have been when you were a kid. It could have been when you were a grown up. Well, the only thing I can think of wasn't a Christmas gift, though. Does that matter? Let's just how close to Christmas. Let me it? tell you what it was. <laughs> And then you guys tell me how nutty this is. So on our wedding, me, me and April's wedding. Same in the ballpark. I'm just saying. Listen to listen to the story. It works. It works. Listen to the story. Oh, cranberry juice. I can't. I can't taste. And uh, cranberry juice is still the worst thing I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> this lets me know that my 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 tongue the the tongue still works. Just, just, I, I don't even know what that means. I don't, my tongue apparently still works. Because you know my, it's terrible. Not my nostrils. <laughs> you know it's terrible. Yeah. Why is it so bad? Is like most like a stringent thing you could possibly 
It's like a, it's like a, a this is my face naturally it's like does. a sour, those oh, sour. Yeah, but a sour beer is good. Like, this no, is I mean like the sour. candies, those little candies. Yeah, it's like a, what are, the, what are those called? A sour. Warhead. It's like yeah, a warhead. Warheads. Oh. Ugh. So anyways, on our, on our wedding night, you know, we're all excited. We're youngsters. We're getting married. And then we come back to my parents' house to open up some gifts. And um, a bunch of people come to see us open our gifts and all of that. And one of my good buddies, Tim, I love him to death, lives in Florida. Love him to death. He he gave us a cat. <laughs> he, 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 he gave us he can't give a cat. He gave us An a cat. Animal? Was it wrapped up in a box like no. the, like National Lampoon's well, Christmas Vacation? It was, yeah, kind of. <laughs> I mean, it was just like in a box, but not like, you know, it wasn't like wrapped or anything. It was just kind of like, here you go. And we were just like, like so at the, shocked. At the wedding, you had to have that like on the table? At the, at the, well, at the opening of the presents oh. ceremony, you know, like. And this cat, we ended up naming him Steve. And... <laughs> And Matt Garrett, I swear to God, this happened like four times. Um, we we lived in this little apartment, and I would put like you know I had like a, a bed, you know, a headboard, and I'd put my my cup of water on the headboard when I go to sleep at night. And that cat would push the water onto my head because they're assholes. <laughs> yeah, cats are dicks. And so eventually, I was like, April, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take this cat to the <laughs> to the pound or whatever or not to the pound but to a pet store because we can't have the, the cat store we, we can't have it it's just it's too it's too you know it keeps pushing water onto my head <laughs> and i can't have that so I, I this is a remember this is a long time ago i'm kind of old but i didn't want to deal with that so i just drove into this neighborhood and i just threw it out the, i just <laughs> i just <laughs> i just took the cat and just you know, threw it onto somebody's yard and then just be drove free. away. Yeah. Be free. Go. <laughs> I gave the cat a fighting chance. Born free. I mean, if I would have taken it to the pound, he would have been put to sleep. But instead, that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> I wanted to let the cat <laughs> go free. It give him a fighting chance. Yeah. Nice. You know, that cat's probably still alive. He's like 70 years old. He's living in a neighborhood <laughs> yeah. somewhere. Mm -hmm. He runs a cigar shop in Houston. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know how he made it all the way to Houston, but we'll just go with it. How do you give somebody else an animal as a gift? Well, yeah, that's 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 a that's a party foul. You don't give people <laughs> live animals as gifts unless it's your kid and you're giving the them kid. a puppy or a, sure. a, a you know something like that. But also, you don't you shouldn't buy somebody else a car. As you see all these commercials and they wrap up like bow around like a new car. Like who would yeah. want that? Like if I'm if we're gonna spend sixty grand this Christmas, let me at least. Have a, have a say in it. right yeah you gotta you want to pick it out yeah 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 so jordan Anyways, what was your weirdest gift um i got a shake weight <laughs> <laughs> that's <was> pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> the shake oh. weight shouldn't exist come on i mean oh. terrence riley looks good with a shake weight but other than that <laughs> have you seen that oh, dude. um uh the uh, gosh damn it who's the Kevin Hart, he did uh, What the Fit. Oh, uh, on YouTube, yeah. If you look up Kevin Hart, What the Fit, uh, and he did a episode where him and uh, who's the Saturday Night Live guy that, that does the... Bill Hader. Bill Hader. And they got shake weights out, and I, have not, I haven't <laughs> laughed so hard in my life because he's got two of them, and he's like doing this. <laughs> Chad got a tortoise. Yeah, you're right, Chad. Uh, that that tortoise will outlive you. Hundred percent. Now, yeah. now that one, that one, I might be into because at least the tortoise, you know, you it's just leave it somewhere yeah. he's, in your house, you know, in this it, corner. Of the it room. isn't as like a cat. You have to instantly start taking care of it. Right. right. Yeah. You know, a turtle you could throw in a box and like after you get back from the honeymoon, you, you just be, it'd still be there. Buried we in gave, the backyard. That's fine. Yeah. We gave our daughter a cat for her fifth birthday and our daughter is 16 now that and i basically just huge i basically just count the days until the cat passes peacefully in her sleep <laughs> now matt i gotta I tell that. you i gotta tell you we gave our daughters a cat when they were little and that we still have that cat emery and he's the best pet 
I've ever had in my life. I absolutely love, I love that. The, the trick with so, cats is you gotta get them a little bit too young. A little bit too like, young, and you cannot have more than one. No, you have two cats. They team up against you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we we got a bad we got a bad one from the batch. We got a bad one. He's an she's an asshole. <laughs> she is an our asshole. cat's an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Her name's Charlotte, and she yeah. hates everybody. Yeah, the cats are tricky. You either get a great one, and ninety yeah, percent of the time know. you get a terrible one. <laughs> All right, so early tasting notes. Uh, oh. What do you What are you guys What are you guys thinking? All right, so here's the problem with champagne. Champagne, like Chardonnay, is actually a pretty good pairing with cigars. That we found out on Flavor Odyssey, Jordan. Remember, we had Chardonnay right. with a Numero Uno, Ooh. and it was a fantastic pairing. Mm. The problem, mm -hmm. the problem with champagne is it has that weird aftertaste. You know, it's sort of like a, um, almost like a stomach bile sort of aftertaste. No, I'm not. I'm not. That's a serious thing. <laughs> it has, it has like a little bit of a a bile-y aftertaste, and it's just so off-putting with with this pairing. Like the cigar wants to be good, but then you have the champagne, and initially when you first take the drink, it's fine. Because it tastes like Chardonnay or something, but then you get that bile-y aftertaste, and it's just like, ugh, it's it's not not a good pairing. Champagne is not a good pairing with any cigar, I don't think. Very well, very specific. So yeah. I'll say this: that um, back, I don't. It was a few months ago. We had Nicole and Marcel from mm -hmm. Adventura on the show, and we did some pairings with them, and. She she basically gave us the list of stuff to pair, and we just had it available. And I paired champagne, and again, it, it wasn't true champagne. I think part of what what you might be experiencing with that, Eric, is especially ones that are brute or dr especially dry champagnes. If you get one that's a, got a little bit more sweetness to it, like something from Spain or something from Italy, um you don't get as much of that acrid kind of finish. Um, and so I paired, I had a, a, a sparkling wine from Spain that I paired with this Queens Pearl, actually a Connecticut shade cigar. And I was blown away. I, yeah, you, I you absolutely would. could not stop raving about what a great pairing it was. It was the only time in my life I ever, while pairing a cigar, I tasted like, I kept saying vanilla cake over and over again because that's what I kept getting from pairing those two together, and it was—I thought it was fantastic. That's I love pairings like that where they're hard to pull off, but when you do, mm -hmm. you know, they really click. Yeah, that's what pairings are all about. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Uh. So, and I know Jordan, you're having trouble with your, you know. Mine tastes like you know nothing with hints of nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was astringent. Well, yeah, I, I have I have no specific taste because it's gone. But I, my my tongue tells me that this is incredibly astringent and bitter and terrible. But that contrast when I when I when I get the cigar, I normally couldn't taste the cigar. But how bad the cranberry is allows the nice sweetness of the cigar to to come in afterwards, and I can appreciate that. Now, Jordan, you. You probably know more about the cigar industry than anybody that I know. And you can pull yourself out of this situation that you're currently in. What, what would you, how would you imagine this would be if you weren't in the <laughs> position that you're in I mean, right pro now? Probably similar. Like, it's just like you're chasing something that's like way too bitter and then contrasting that with a nice, you know, earthy, sweet uh, cigar. It's it's like the, the contrast makes you appreciate the cigar more than you maybe not more than you normally would because the cigar is really good, but it's yeah. just a, a strange contrast. What are you getting from? So my champagne is uh, is obviously um, unleaded, but it is very sweet and bright. Um, and when I when I take a sip of champagne and then I hit the San Andreas that brightness really translates well actually with the spiciness of the cigar. And it kind of continues that <clears throat> flavor percolation, I'll call it on my tongue and in my mouth. So 
uh, while it's still a strange flavor profile, the effect is kind of interesting. Okay. I, I wouldn't pair this normally. Um, uh, flavor wise, not, um, not favorable to each other. Now, okay. y- usually Garrett, you have some chocolatey sweetness with the San Andreas and you're probably getting some sweetness from your, from your yeah, drink. All the, all those... the sweetness is washed away with, the, is it? with okay. the drink. Yeah. So you're not really getting the, the good part I'm of I'm not the... getting any of the sweetness on the cigar after, after drinking the champagne. So instead of like complimenting each other, that's sort of t- wiping one away. Washes it away. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Well, <clears throat> I'll say about this wine that I don't like it. <laughs> um, and I, I, I think it's actually a good thing that I don't like it. The reason I don't like it is because one of the things that I like so much about a lot of red wines that I've come to enjoy is um, the, the body and the long finish. And this has none of those. Mm. This wine, it, it has a little bit of body, but not really very much. Um, the finish is super short, but with this cigar that it's a Connecticut shade cigar, that's actually a good thing because I can still taste the cigar. I think if this were a, a really, you know, rich Zinfandel or Malbec or Cabernet, I think the cigar would be completely lost. But the fact that this wine really is pretty, it's kind of peaked. Mm, and interesting. I don't think, uh, I, I think in, in a way it's sort of a happy accident that it's not killing, killing the cigar. I mean, the wine it's, it's got decent viscosity. It's got a little, you know, it's got some legs to it, but the color you could, I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but the color is even a little, you know, it's thin. So, yeah. So that, that, uh, so here's what, here's what makes me like uh, any wine. Like these are the, these are the characteristics that I look for. And, 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 and Matt, you tell me if you agree or disagree or what you think about this, but when I'm searching for wines and this is why I, I, to- I tend to gravitate towards Zins a lot, um, although I do like cabs. I-, I like them all, but I-, I tend to gravitate towards Zins a bit because I like the-, the real jammy sort of note, like a real jammy kind of strong berry note. Then I- a little bit of earth comes in, and then at the yeah. end, at the end, I like that butter finish, like when it has yeah. a buttery finish and it coats my mouth. Like th- those are the wines – that I really, really gravitate toward. And I think that's why people always say, like, Eric, you drink Zins almost every single night. Like, because Zins tend to to have that. They like, they sort of have those characteristics. And that's kind of why I gravitate to them. And I think they make for a really great Zins make for a really great cigar pairing because yeah. they're kind of complex. I, some people would say Zins aren't complex. They're just, oh, it's just sweet, da da da. I disagree. Like modern day Zins. They've got a lot going on. And what you're saying with yours is it doesn't really have a lot going on. It's just yeah, like cool yeah, or it's, something. It, it's it's not sweet, but it's also just not really it's not really there. I mean, there's there's just mm. you know, it 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 has very briefly it hits the palate and it tastes like red wine for a brief second, and then it literally just goes away. There's there's really nothing nothing to it. So, um, I, I feel like I don't know much about wine, but like you can almost tell, like, <clears throat> with the first sip, just be for me, it's just like all texture. Like, if it's if that's too thin, like, I just know I'm gonna hate it. Well, and even the I mean, Garrett can smell this, even the aroma is pretty wispy, hmm. you know, yeah, it smells like wine, but it's there's <laughs> no, it doesn't have that, you know, sometimes with really rich, deep, yeah, red wines that even on the nose. It it kind of tingles the, on the nose just smelling it that first couple times, and this really it just I would expect isn't there. to see that on Sunday morning. It's almost like you know the communion wine, but not <laughs> okay. not sweet like Lambrusco. You know, I, I got a wine story for you, Matt. Do you want to hear it? Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah. A, f- a few years ago, we went to um, we went to uh, South Dakota, see the uh, Mount Rushmore and all that, right? There's. And um, so me and we were, you know, we were staying like in a cabin or whatever. And uh, me and April were like, you know, we should have brought some wine. Like we should have brought some red wine. This would be a perfect night to get some red wine. So we, we thought, well, let's just go to like the nearest store. They didn't have, it was just weird little teeny like 
you know, little markets around there. There wasn't any like normal stores or anything. So that we, we finally found a store that had some, some wine and it was all South Dakota made wine. They like, they, apparently they, they're starting to do wine in South Dakota. And this guy yeah. was like, no, oh, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. But this, this one right here, this is our magnum opus right here. This is the yeah. best South Dakota wine that you can get your hands on. So we're like, oh, <laughs> great. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take High a bottle of indeed. it. Indeed. Yeah. And we go back. <laughs> we open it up. It. I swear to God, I kid you not, it tasted exactly like grape Dimatap. Exactly. <laughs> now, I'm not even kidding. It literally tasted identical <laughs> To grape Dimatap. It was Ugh. the most bizarre thing uh, that I've ever had in my entire life. It's so weird. That reminds me of the Schitt's Creek episode. Mm-hmm. What are they doing that? Where I've um, never seen the show. So um, a local winery is trying to get one of the main characters, Moira Rose, to endorse their brand and have her rose. And they're tasting all these wines, and of course. They hate all of them, and then they're mixing them to try and get like a something passable, and they are hammered by the end of it. And it's <laughs> it's hilarious. But now Tanner yeah. Cole, Tanner Cole said uh, Syrah is my go-to red for cigars. That's an excellent choice. That's a very good and, red uh, to have with cigars. Yeah, a, a petite Syrah is also maybe even better in my opinion for that. But yeah, that's a good pick, Tanner. And there are some. I, I don't know how much you've experimented with red blends. They're, they they can be super hit or miss. I mean, there's some yeah, blends yeah. out there that are terrible, but there are some that, that my wife and I have really enjoyed. And she and I have different tastes, but blends are nice because they, if it's made well, it can hit the points that, yeah. that both types of wine drinkers will like. And it's and less of a gamble, we, I feel like. Yeah. You get a red, it's like, yeah. it's, gonna, it's not going to blow your socks off or anything, but it's going to be a good one. It's going to be pretty where solid. Do we put, right. uh, where do we put Boone's Farm? Oh, <laughs> we, put it, we put it in our our, our our 1974 Pinto in high school. That's where we put it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's that's top tier. That's, oh, yeah. you know, that, that's on the top shelf right next to MD 2020. Oh, yeah. And right. Sutter Home, Moby White David. Zinfandel, hey, Moby man, you, David. You get that Boone's Farm, a bag of uh, cheese flavored Doritos. You're good yeah. to go. And the big gallon jug of Ernest and Julio Gallo. That's where we started, man. We yeah. started with uh, we started. <laughs> what, what's that one? Um, Carlo Rossi. Yeah, uh, but and... yeah, but what's the type of wine now? Now they do it. Now it's like popular, and people make it themselves. What's what? What am sangria? I thinking? Sangria. Like everybody's sangria. making sangrias, oh, yeah. but like the popular thing was that Carlo Rossi sangria. You get the big. Oh yeah. The big jug. It's That's what like, got me started on wine. It's like carbonated. It was, it was good. I, I could Growing drink. up Kool Aid. Yeah. Oh, what's that? What's that breakfast uh, drink with champagne? Mimosa. Mimosa. Yeah. I'm gonna make a freaking mimosa. Have if you want if you want to mix it up. It's cool because you you can turn it. You can mix up mimosas with all different kinds of stuff. You can put add cranberry to it or raspberry to it or all different kinds. You can, the palate with mimosas is endless. You can just create your own. I'm not a thing. mimosa guy. Oh yeah. I've never no. had one. I, I guess it. I'm just not a champagne guy. Maybe I just I feel like it's something that gives you a headache every time. Oh uh, really? I don't, yeah. I've never had that problem that was 100% with hundred percent me with headaches and, when I was drinking. Oh yeah. The worst headache I ha- ever had in my life was a champagne hangover. Well, you're not supposed to drink a whole Magnum by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, tips you know. tips from a pro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this I will say that this, you know, um, not all spins on the pairing roulette wheel are wins, and this um, this this pairing for me is is not a win, but uh, that, but Matt, that, Matt, Matt, that's sort of because you don't like that wine. Like what if that yeah, was a, the wine, what, what if it was a good I, wine? I will say honestly, if it was a good wine, if it was a really good like like we were talking about with the, you know red wines that truly hit the mark, I think the cigar would be completely buried. This this mm. Connecticut shade, you yeah. know, because this especially this Lancero size has has that the mild thing really dialed in well. Right. And I think any Anything other than like a champagne or a Chardonnay or 
Um, yeah, you go white wine on that. That'd be good. Yeah, you could. I would definitely go white wine, uh, Chardonnay, maybe even. I might even do like an Italian, like a Barolo, which has just a little bit more back end sweetness on it and not so much peppery punch. I would I would go that route too, but or Zima or Z- or Zima, <laughs> absolutely. Hey, now you're talking. That's that's in our backyard, baby. Coors, <laughs> dude. That's Zima's Coors. with a watermelon Jolly Rancher. Uh, true story. That was my very last alcoholic beverage. Wow. I mean, if you're gonna end there, dude. Yeah. That's so you just guns. drop a Jolly Rancher in the bottle and let it dissolve. Dude, it, it was it was magical. We were. I'm not gonna lie. That sounds horrible. It. I am not <laughs> proud of it. I am not proud of it. Well, Tom Brady likes him. Does he? No, I'm joking. Oh. That's, that's a joke that a lot of friends friends of mine we pass back and forth. Is you know Tom Brady drinks Zima that kind Got of thing. Got it. He wears Uggs, so you know. He wears Uggs. <laughs> drinks Zima. Makes sense. So, um, so Eric, final thoughts yes. on your on your pairing. Well, I'd say uh, a little bit of uh, good news is um, as we've been sitting here and as I've been drinking this champagne, it's mellowed out. Um, mm-hmm. That sort of bile flavor has dropped out a bit. Uh, I don't know if that's thanks to the cigar or not, because this is a pretty strong cigar. It's got some yeah. it's got some kick to it. So the cigar maybe has pushed some of that bile away. And now I'm not hating this pairing nearly as much. Um, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a solid, uh, eh. 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 I'm going to give it a solid. Eh. Cause I, if initially I was going to give it a solid thumbs down, um, I can't go thumbs up, but yeah, like it, it's, it's mellowed out and I'm not hating it. Okay. Right on. And Jordan, it just tastes like, tastes like nothing. Cigar wow. smoke. And no, I've gotten so, I've gotten a little moist, used to it. Moist. That's what happens. You, you halfway in, you get a little used to it. Not as yeah. mouth lip puckering, but it, you know, like it, whether it's cigars or or drinks, I just hate when when they dry your mouth out. I'm usually looking yeah. for like a mouth watering cigar, you know, or, or yeah. drink. And this is just like I remember one time I was when I was a kid, we were playing. I was playing hockey, and the moms are supposed to bring you like you know, like some juice in between games or something. And this one mom brought us all cranberry juice in between, like oh. super tired. And like, oh man, I need a Gatorade. She brought us cranberry juice. It's like, you guys all crap your pants. Possible thing you could- <laughs> <laughs> Ever since then, I have nightmares of cranberry juice. Everybody line up for the urine sample. <laughs> <laughs> oh brother. Uh, so uh, Garrett, would you, would you pair that again? No, no, I would not pair this again. Um, the, uh, again, like we were talking before, I get no sweetness out out of this cigar, which I think is one of the benefits of a great San Andreas. This cigar is fantastic, and the champagne I have is a very bright uh, and sweet champagne that takes all of that away from this. Okay, but Understood. Uh, the the effect, like the the tingly effect, if you're really into the spicy and the the tingly sensation. Uh, could be fun for you, not, and I like it. But if it sands the flavor, yeah, nope, right on for me. Well, let's uh, let's go to number two, shall we? Let's do let's it. Let's go to number two, uh, Eric. Let's start with you this time. All right, we have the. <laughs> okay, I can't get Habano again. We have the oh, beverage the drink wheel first. lined up, and I can't, I can't get champagne again. Come on, bourbon. Come on, bourbon. Yeah, baby. Give Come me the bourbon, bourbon or or the wine. I got a good wine here. No, no. we're not gonna do. We're not gonna give you cranberry juice because Jordan already had cranberry juice. Yeah, yeah. You gotta give me something different. You gotta give me something different. I'm just gonna this keep could, spinning it till it. This could take bourbon. hours, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this did not. This did not work this way. And there Bay should be a way that you could. Uh, you, you should eliminate yeah, eliminate them. Oh, I can. Oh, yeah, I can do can that. Do that. Oh, it was uh, so oh close. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, you, God. There's oh, no God. way you can pair I'm, I'm egg go with, with any cigar. All right, baby. I'm ready. No I'm going to go I with got the metal gold old style. I got the metal now, gold old style. you're allowed to mix some bourbon in, right? That's, of course. That's, that's how, how you drink well, a, an egg. No, I actually did. I, I did the same thing. Um, let I'm me pull that off this. there. I did the same thing myself, but 
I, I actually grabbed some rum that just in case oh, eggnog comes good. up for that's me, good. I'm going to add a little bit of rum to the eggnog. All right. Here goes. Here goes me eggnog. This is and I, now normally you, it's good to mix in a little like uh, half and half too. Half um, and half. Yeah. That's just and then a, and then you get a little nutmeg and you get a little cinnamon. So I'm not doing yeah. that. So in lieu of that, in lieu of that, I'm going to add folks for the vis, uh, for the viewing audience a little old Forester 100. Oh 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 yeah. Here, let right me there. get this off the screen. Show us show us that bottle. There we go. So this is yeah, a, that is this is one of the better. Uh, so if you're trying to figure out a good go to bourbon, it's yes, uh, very affordable. Old Forester 100 is the best. The 86 is not quite there. Too thin. Too thin. The yeah. Old Forester 100 is a legit. It will make you happy every time you have it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this. If you see this on the shelf for $24, buy it. It's that, really that, a fantastic bourbon. You are speaking my language. That is my absolute number one go-to everyday bourbon. And yeah, the, It's a, it's a uh, great hope, go-to. I'm hoping this pops up for me because this is the bourbon I have. Nice. The Old Forester bonds. just makes some really good stuff. They really yeah. do. So right, what am I smoking? Um, let's get your cigar. Oh, mixing this right, up. Hold here. on. Mixing up my eggnog. Let's wait for it. Wait for it. What cigar did you have? You had the I had a Habano. Oh, Habano. I had a Habano. That's right. Yeah, I had a Habano. Yeah. All right, here we go. You are going to smoke. Ooh. It's very thick. It's very thick. <laughs> Broadly. <laughs> Broadly. All right. So there we go. I'm going to do the same thing Jordan did. I have the uh, Year of the Rats from Drew Estate. Nice. With the very difficult. So now we can know what it tastes like. Yeah. All right, All right Jordan. I'm, I'm in, boys. I'm in. Your I'm next beverage is. Cutter, please. The good one. Oh, it's over here. You took it. <laughs> are we gonna go with what the wheel says? I, I, we can't do that. Right. Are, no. we, are, are we? Are we? Are we allowed to go the same thing? Give him something different. We'll give you something different. We should just take cranberry juice off. No cranberry juice. <laughs> no cranberry juice. No eggnog. It's gonna land on freaking eggnog again. I'm gonna <laughs> get rid. I'm gonna get just rid give of me bourbon. Juice. Well, but we take off it. all the ones but the bourbon one. <laughs> well, we still it. need it. I can't. It's you can uncheck it. And not delete it. That uh, no, just won't show it. It doesn't change. Just all pretend that you got bourbon. This I worked much bourbon. better in beta testing. That's okay. This we is, got time. This is what we you got get time. Live. Oh. Right, Jordan gets champagne. Jordan gets champagne. champagne. There you go. It's right there. And your Jafflin. cigar. Jafflin. Jafflin. Come on, Connecticut. Come on, Connecticut. Oh, it's looking good. It it's looking, looking good. good. Come on, come on, come on. Go, 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 go. Yes. Oh, and hey. sadly, your palate is jacked up and you won't be able to taste it. No, but get this. <laughs> like the, there's wait, wait, wait. There is a good a good side to this because Jordan gets a killer Connecticut. And I have a feeling, Jordan, that this might be a good pairing, even though you can't taste, because you get the Perdomo 12 year aged. Oh, yeah. Very nice. That's well, my friend. Twelve year aged bourbon barrel, longest cigar title that there is. But that's there we go. That's, I think that's going to be good. I do too. I think you're even going to sense some of that punching through the stuff that you're recovering we'll from. Yeah. All right, Garrett. You can't, you can't go wrong with a Perdomo. All right. Next up for Garrett, your beverage is. Come on, eggnog. <laughs> I'll trade nope. you, Garrett. No, nope, you can't do that nope. again. No, nope. can't do it again. Let's go, eggnog. Stop <laughs> here. Stop, you, stop, you, stop, stop, oh, stop. yeah, you might get well, stop, stop, stop. Yes. All right. All right, eggnog. I've never seen anybody actually want to get eggnog. Good job, Garrett. I'm proud of you. Pick that. Uh, yep. Eggnog is a good drink. I yeah. also got um, from it's not with Matt's, cigars. Matt's pantry. Oh, that you was smart. Why didn't I do that? Oh, yeah. Very smart. I can still well, smell a um, this, nutmeg. I've tested this that stuff, out the other day. 
looks kind of legit. There's actually like little flecks of maybe vanilla bean in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I got that in mind too. Yeah. Yeah. Vanilla bean. Wow. All right. Look at that presentation. All right, your cigar with your eggnog is. Come on, Connecticut. Come on, Connecticut. Come on, Connecticut. You can't have <laughs> Connecticut. On, Connecticut. Oh, yeah. Oh, doggone it. I don't, I don't there know what that is. would be. Yeah, we no, did, you we just did, did. I did a champagne. Oh, yeah, that's true. No, I had San Andreas. So Broadleaf, Broadleaf. it is. So that is. Yep. That The CAO. Now you got the you got the same pairing I do, Garrett. Oh. So that is the CAO Mortal Coil. This mortal coil. Mortal coil! <laughs> Finish him. Finality. Finish him. All right. Matt, Tanner Coles is bourbon is with a splash of be... Nog. Yes. Thank you, Tanner. Come on. No. Cranberry oh. juice. All right. I'm going to do cranberry juice. <laughs> and... <laughs> You and I couldn't find the real stuff, so my cranberry juice is, um, my you know, spray. It's juice with some oh, cranberry juice oh, in it. No, I couldn't find foul. the real stuff. That's gonna taste good. It. Come on! <laughs> I know it's good. <laughs> I call foul. I couldn't where find is, the real stuff. Where is the National Cigar Blog Federation when we need them to <laughs> overrule this? Cool. Oh, it'll be all over social media tomorrow. <laughs> Jeez. And my cigar paired with this cranberry type beverage. Oh, yes. San Andreas. There you go. San Andreas. All Nobody right. got Cameroon all night long. Poor Africa. That is the risk you play. Or that's the risk you take when you spin. Seems a little racist. That's all. The bearing, <laughs> the bearing roulette wheel. Um, what is my san andreas cigar my san andreas cigar is the undercrown oh jordan just smoked that before the show 10th yes, anniversary yeah. toro size to oh be exact gosh. i think um, that is probably the best size in that line. i actually just my personal opinion i prefer the robusto mm. um which is weird because that. i usually like the corona viva size and the they, but State the Corona, v, it wasn't the same on this uh, on this line. It was like a, it was like a short little squat. Yeah, smoke. I didn't. It wasn't the normal I, Corona Viva size. It wasn't my favorites out of the Undercrown 10th anniversary. My my favorite um, has been the the Robusto, but I I think the Toro is very good, um, and the Corona Doble also very good. If I you had have Lonsdale the other day, the the, the factory one, you know. I that was good. That was up. really good. I can imagine that it was probably good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, here is my. I think I have a. Hey, uh, me and Garrett, both of us probably have a milk mustache. Are you happy? No. I am so happy. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is thick. <laughs> Switch. With three C's. This. So this cranberry juice, and uh, I put put quotes around it it's uh cranberry juice grape juice apple juice pear juice Jeez. and natural flavoring so Jeez. natural flavoring. it was natural the best flavoring. it was the best they had looks like you just got like a vitamin water there yeah it's it's uh we'll see you know it looks like your fancy wine. fancy christmas glass that's a nice touch. We didn't do the Christmas glass. Though. Yeah, we should have done that. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Yeah, it tastes like fruit juice. Go figure. Oh, oh my gosh, you guys, what? What? This pairing. Oh, is Garrett falling apart? Is stupid good. Really? It is wow. stupid There's good. no way the smoke can cut through that. <laughs> thick, thick. 100%. Nog. Get out of here. No, unlike the last cigar where the the flavors were, um, you know, muted. I, when I drink the eggnog, or I pull on the cigar, I'm getting a beautiful meld of the two, <laughs> and I, I'm I'm in love with this pairing right now. I You're feel straight. like I have the same pairing, and I feel like I put a condom over my tongue. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 
the eggnog is just like a barrier. Like in The Simpsons when he like dips his tongue in that wax and yeah. he just have all the peppers. <laughs> <and> he- <laughs> exactly. No, it's not terrible, Garrett. I'm just I'm just giving you a little bit of hard time. It's it's not it's not terrible, but the eggnog does it does prevent it does create a bit of a barrier. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna direct your steps here, but you could always add another splash of bourbon to that eggnog. That's all I'm yeah. saying. I will. I'm, I will. And I, and I, <laughs> I, I'll say this. I'm very glad that I got the uh, Drew Estate Year of the Rat because this cigar is punchy enough, I think, that it. I'm still enjoying the cigar because if I had, uh, let's say I had the HVC Broadleaf, which I love. I love that cigar. I, I'd be maybe a little bit worried that that might get run over by the eggnog. Uh, but this this Drew Estate Ear of the Rat is doing a sufficient job of... It's about as full as it gets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, same thing with the Mortal Coil. It's uh, It's got enough oomph that it cuts through, and it's... I don't know. It's pairing very well. The, this eggnog is, is pretty sweet, and then with the added nutmeg that I put in it, I get the vanilla, the nutmeg, uh, the creaminess, and then with the draw the cigar it just smokies that up and creates this it smokies that up it smokies that up that's that's the <laughs> next t- smokies that's, is a verb that's the next t-shirt mm-hmm. it smokies <laughs> that up <laughs> trademark pending well and and that cigar is um so for the last few years, CAO has released a fair number of cigars with the Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper on them. And I haven't honestly been super huge fans of many of those releases. But this Mortal Coil, I think, stepped it up a little bit over some of the other ones, like the Session and the Bones. I just didn't think they were fantastic. Those, and, those are probably the same cigar, just with a new band on. Yeah. The yeah. Session and the Bones. And the the mortal coil just seems a little, uh, I've been more happy with the mortal coil than I was with some of those previous CAO broadleaf releases. What would you guys say is your favorite CAO? That's an interesting brand, right? Because they they throw out a lot of stuff. Off the top of my head, I would probably say the OG Amazon Basin. Mm. OG Vision. Good pick. Oh, the OG Vision? Yeah. Back Back in the day. Mine was... Oh boy, um, probably the Sopranos when it oh, was shit. when it was still you're right OG um, OG before it was all the OGs um, yeah. Consigliere, which is not the same yeah the, the Consigliere is not the same cigar and even the Sopranos while I still think the Sopranos cigar post buyout was pretty good the ones before I just I was so in love with it, especially that big. Uh, boss size the mm-hmm. torpedo. I think Matt, where where would you rank um, the Sopranos show as far as uh, shows? If the Sopranos show was a cigar. What it, is would it, it be? is is it in your top ten favorite shows? Is it in your top five? Um. Yeah, I I'd, I'd say as far as be careful how you answer because I'll I'm just gonna walk off depending on what you say. <laughs> I'll I'll say as as far as TV dramas go, Sopranos is easily top five for me. Okay, good man, good man. It's it's probably um it's probably top three for me. I, I totally um, agree. I still I still hold firm to my um love of the show Breaking Bad. All right, so give me as, your top uh, I'll give you my top three if you give me your top three. You show me yours, um, I'll show you mine. And we're, we're just doing like dramas? Yeah. Just uh, bingeable shows. Oh, so so comedies? Yeah. Any bingeable, any bingeable. What's my top three go like this? Sopranos, Breaking Bad, Lost. Those are my top three. Jordan, what are your top three? Uh Sopranos, Breaking Bad, The Office. Okay, Garrett. Firefly, you're off the show. <laughs> I love Firefly. 
Um, I don't go, even know what it is. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a sci-fi show. They only uh, had one season. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, Firefly. Then we're gonna go. Hmm. I'm halfway through Sopranos, but Ooh. it's uh, it's certainly. I mean, I, I'm I'm in love. Um, so good. It is so good. So I would probably go Firefly, Sopranos, The Wire. Now the wires one. Uh, oh, let's let Matt go first. Matt, what's what are your top three? I'm gonna say Breaking Bad, number one, Sopranos number two, and Mad Men number three. Mm. Not mad at that at all. You know, the wire is one people talk about, and I have not watched that one. So that's one oh. I've tried like ten times. Same here, so, Jordan. The first Same here. Couple episodes I, are so bad I can't. Yeah, Can't I've I've gotten yep. I've gotten a little bit into maybe the third episode, and it's just I'm so bored. I know. Um, I, it's I, the I, character development phase of that show, and I'll admit that I would say the first five episodes you have to just get through, and once you get through those, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, that's a, that's money. that's a kind of the same with Sopranos. The first season is not that good. The, the first season of Sopranos is not but that I, good. I got through it. It's, I know. I'm just saying it's. <laughs> It's you character know. development. Right. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the first season of if if a show once the show is done with its run, if the show ends up being one of the greats, then you go back and you watch the first season of that show again. A lot of it is exposition and yeah. and just developing character backstories and character, you know, putting the first like mark on the map of the character arc yeah but they they seem to have overcome that a bit at least like breaking bad that's not the case with breaking bad that's you, true you watch that it's that's true it hits right gate. out of the gate yeah. yeah that is true sons of anarchy that's another good sons one. of anarchy i struggled with the way it ended because and I, i'm not going to spoil anything but the reason <laughs> fuck you tony <laughs> Sex in the City definitely gets honorable mention for Garrett. Is it? Yeah. Is that in your top five? I mean, it it would be more Gilmore Girls. I am so grateful to say I've never seen more than two and a half seconds of an episode of Sex in the City. I have. I'm grateful. And Ozark, I I'll agree I, with Tony that so that's one that Ozark went off the rails for me Correct. when they got on the 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 riverboat hundred percent casino. Yep. It went off the rails for me, and I just I lost complete interest. How about when this? They got on the River True Boat Detective Casino. season one. Oh, it's amazing. I've heard that's awesome. I, I really need to. Either. I need to. The and first, I loved Ed Wood before it got canceled, too. The first oh. season of that True Detective was amazing. But I don't watch any of the other ones. The third one's pretty good. Still. Yeah, I've heard the rest of it's terrible. Wow. Um, World. I want to I wanna ask another Christmas question yes. to you guys. So, um, Jordan, can you remember? Because. You know, we all have we see the Christmas movies and, you know, we hear the songs and all this stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, this childlike wonder and things like that that come along with the Christmas season. So do you can you remember a genuine memory when you were a kid that there was one circumstance? It could have been a gift. It could have been a family event or something where you 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 remember to this day this sense of. Childlike wonder that oh, yeah. you were caught up in in the Christmas season? Uh, for me, I have to go, uh, it's probably like 96, 95 or 96, Nintendo 64. Got that mm. for Christmas. It was, that was like that magical Christmas moment when we just played Mario Go-Kart until today. We were still playing it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, Nintendo 64. I've got a good one. Yeah, go for it. So I was probably seven eight years old and we as a family like the griswolds went out to cut our own tree and so we cut our own tree down and we load it up we get back to the house and we we're decorating it and then um a police officer arrives at our house and i hear my mom and dad arguing with this police officer out the front door and then the police officer just comes into the house grabs the tree and leaves wow with all the ornaments and stuff on everything on it (laughs) wow (laughs) you're a mean one yeah no doubt well apparently 
He had to take it back to there was a light that didn't light on one side. <laughs> we had just <laughs> we had just cut down the tree of a random neighbor's Jeez. tree in their yard. It wasn't the cop's yard, was it? That would be hilarious that if you cut down a tree out of a cop's yard and he comes that back to collect. That would be hilarious, but <laughs> that's uh that's how I grew up. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty deep. Dude. That tells us a lot about Garrett. Yeah. 100%. 100%. <laughs> yep. Eric, what about you? Did you do you have a, a memory of of like Oh yeah. Sh- of of awe and wonder with Christmas? You know, I have this memory of every Christmas Eve, we would go to my mom's mom's house, my grandma, and they were Italian family. On my mom's side, they're 100% Italian, last name Delisa, and we'd go over there, and they they lived in a part of Denver where it's all Italians. It's still kind of that way, a little bit, but now it's kind of gentrified or whatever, but it was all Italians. We'd go to their house. All of my relatives, it looked like it looked like the godfather, right? Like everybody there was like 100% Italian, big noses, the whole works. And they would they would uh, cook smelts. Do you guys know what smelts are? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Love smelt. So they would cook smelts. And if you guys know what they are, it, it, that makes a thick smoke through the house, right? Like it, it just a gross thick... cooking it. Yep. Oh, yeah. And they're really good. They're super tasty when they're fried mm-hmm. like that. But they would all be smoking cigarettes, cooking smelts, <laughs> and all of us kids, it was just it was literally like a thick fog. Like I, I knew my brother was somewhere in the room. You know, I'd be like, somewhere there's some of my relatives are in this room. You couldn't see because it was just full of smoke. And so we would go outside, you know, no matter how cold it was. And right across the street is Elitch's. Was a uh, Elitch's is a uh, amusement park, and it used to be right there in in North Denver. And we would just take snowballs and like throw them at the Elitch's sign and stuff. Just do anything we could to get out of that that just blanket of thick smoke. And then we'd leave <laughs> that night, you know, to go home. And our clothes would just be just, you know, it smelled like Marlboro, you know, just all the way like <laughs> dripping down, you know. But, you know, in, in retrospect, I love the, that memory. Like that memory yeah. just stands out to me because I was with my cousins, I think. I think I was with them. Uh, we were with my cousins and all the uh, all the guys and just, you know, eating Christmas cookies and having a good time. And that's 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 my Christmas memory. Nice. Love it. Matt. So my my uh, I have two older brothers. It's just uh, three of us. And uh, it was early 80s, uh, 81, 82, maybe 83, somewhere in there. And um. You know, we spent a lot of years really, um, you know, with, you know, just scrimping by and, you know, um, there was this Christmas that I don't remember exactly, you know, all the different gifts and everything. But one thing I remember that was under the tree, there was this big box that was marked for all three of us boys. And, you know, we're pretty close in age, you know, there's basically two years between each of us and we open this big box and it's this big badass magnavox boom box (laughs) and to kids that i mean we were we were like the kids that we had the little desktop cassette player recorder with the big fat buttons on it with the flip open lid that you put the tape in. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, we yeah. put that next to the radio speaker and record our favorite Hell songs yeah. off the radio and that's play right. them back from that cuz we, you know, that's all we had. <laughs> and then all of a sudden one year we open this big box and there's this big ass Magnavox boombox. And we absolutely loved that thing and we're just jamming out to whatever we were into at the time i was gonna ask you what what were you jamming out to oh man early 80s um like van halen (laughs) right um early 80s was such a are you speed wagon maybe we we, there was a lot of like what now is classic rock like yes like ario speed wagon we were huge queen fans oh yeah, Um, yeah, yeah, yeah we were big into I was I was big into some pop acts like Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie and and stuff like that, um, and then we were also just going back to 
from the music we grew up with from our parents parents playing it all the time jazz stuff and um and that kind of thing but yeah we uh, and then not long after that we started to get into um you know stuff like Def Leppard and uh Hearts and you know when they were Heart when they were still you know still had that that rock and roll sound not the pop sound so much but uh yeah it was uh, but just to be able to record directly from the radio signal to the tape instead of having the hissy sound of the speaker <laughs> you know it was like a it was like a revelation it was a game changer that we could record all this music and um make mixtapes for your girl make mixtapes yeah uh it was so that was just that, that was, was a best. really cool thing um and that yeah 1982 somewhere in that neighborhood um so let's check in on the pairings yes uh, eric how is how is your pairing going all right this is not a terrible pairing um the i added some more bourbon to my eggnog to kind of thin it out a little bit so that i could um try to you know cut through some of the thickness the the tongue coating flavor of the eggnog and the drew estate cigar the year of the rat does a good job of allowing me to still taste the cigar even though the eggnog's thick so I'm going to give this a slight thumbs up. I would never choose this pairing ever, but it's not, it's not horrific. So I can't go thumbs down. I'm not going to go like this. I'm going to give it just a, a 10% up. 10%. Right on. You can't do Hey, that. that's in the right direction. I can do whatever no. I want. If this, if this was on flavor, I would see you give I, it a thumbs down. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jordan, are you getting anything? I'm, I'm not getting anything, but, you know, I have the, the sensations. I, I can tell that, the you know, it's a nice, <laughs> bright, effervescent uh, drink. It, it, it matches the intensity of the cigar pretty nicely. And the cigar is coating, seems to be coating every region of the palate, very well balanced. Uh, and it's got that mouthwatering aspect that I like. Uh, I, I, I would assume this is a thumbs up, but. Here we are, <laughs> here, but here we are. Um, for for me, uh, the the cranberry juice and the undercrown ten, it's actually, um, it's actually really good. Um, the chocolatey cocoa, earthy from the cigar mixed with the sweet, you know, fruit of the of the cranberry juice. Because I actually have had this cigar many times with like, uh hazy ipas or sours um or even even with an old-fashioned and it it goes this cigar goes really because it's a very bold cigar so it goes really nicely with um um you know beverages that have um tartness and you know it can stand up to that kind of thing and there's definitely tartness from this juice um, which reminds me of some of the sours that I like and some of the, you know, some of the IPAs that I like, not the funkiness so much more, the juiciness from certain IPAs. Mm. Um, so, you know, somebody who doesn't partake in alcohol, you know, if you've got a bold San Andreas cigar and you want to pair it with something, you know, grab some cranberry juice, grab some kind of fruit juice. Uh, I think you're going to be happy with it. I think it goes nicely together. I give it a thumbs up. Nice. I have a, uh, a different experience obviously than than Eric and I and I'm wondering if it has to do with the eggnog brand because this one while it is thick it doesn't um yeah and I'm going to I'm going to take a uh, Oh you another, want you yeah, want Yeah yeah please sir can I have some may more have another um it doesn't completely um coat and condom up my tongue and palate <laughs> I'm never um, going to forget that phrase ever. <laughs> and this is uh, just so you guys know, this is Kemp's. It's a local dairy in the Min Minnesota Twin Cities area. So Ooh. Kemp's Golden Eggnog. Ooh, that looks good. So, yeah, it's got a lot of nice vanilla bean in it. And I told Garrett this before. I was I was very scared to get eggnog. I'm glad I didn't because I haven't had eggnog probably since somewhere between 1989 and 91. Uh, and I only had two or three eggnog experiences when I was a kid and I hated every single one of them. And it was probably, I should revisit it sometime just to try it as a, you know, 
uh, uh, an old man because my experiences prior were I hated it. It's probably a combination of the fact that I was forced to drink it and by the fact that it was probably, you know, the cheapest dime store. You probably store. had that weird, like, warm version of eggnog where it's like a pudding. It was warm. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. And it was eggnog spelled with two Gs. So, is it, not, isn't that uh, how it's, is that how it's not how it's spelled? Well, the egg has it's two Gs. G. <laughs> oh, so the yeah, the latter the Gs. Nog. Yeah. The nog G. <laughs> Egg nog. <-a> <laughs> um so one uh one last Christmas question. Okay. Do you guys have uh and this could be in you know your big family or your individual families now? Do you have is there something because everybody's got like these traditional sort of Western American things that happen during Christmas? Oh, you we know, got a good you, one. Is there something non-traditional that that a lot of people may be would would say? Well, that's kind of a weird Christmas tradition that you guys have that other people would think was a little off the wall. Now we, I know Jordan's gonna have the same one, so I'll just I'll just say it. And you guys, being from Minnesota, I'll bet you guys are gonna know what I'm talking about, which a lot of people would not know what I'm talking about. But every Christmas, we so I'm half I'm half Italian on my mom's side. She's 100 percent Italian, and on my dad. He was 100% Norwegian, and so every Christmas we make lefse. And mm. it, when we when we make lefse, people are like, "What are you What are you talking about lefse?" And it's like a it's basically like a potato tortilla in a way. Mm -hmm. And you can put what we traditionally do is we put uh, melted butter and sugar, and you roll it up real thin and you eat it. But some people put ham and egg and you can do lots mm -hmm. of different things with it but we've been doing that my entire life and we've carried on that tradition uh mm -hmm. with the kids and it's a ton of fun just the making of it the making of the lefsa it's such a process it takes all day you long you can only do it once a year you can only do it it's once a year much work. it's a lot of work <laughs> it, it is a lot of work do it more than once a year we have uh, actual lefsa you know griddles that are oh the, nice you know the yeah. real the real ones they're big they're about this big we have two of those we have lefsa turners you know everybody has a uh, a uh, they have names like sven yeah you know they every <laughs> everything has a name and it's a, it's an entire family uh, thing, and it's it's a ton of fun. So yeah, Lefsa, that's our big uh, our big odd tradition that we carry on every single year. So do you have a Norwegian in your family? Yeah, my yeah, dad. My dad is. Said. Oh, yeah, totally yeah. missed that. Good Tormson. I'm half and half. Good. Yeah, Good Tormson. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, we have we cheated. Um, we have some store bought Lefsa in the fridge right now. Okay, there's store bought Lefsa. Yeah, up oh, yeah. well up in, in in Minnesota yeah, there is Minnesota. yeah, um, and and it's only available you know November Seasonal. through through January first pretty much. What do you and put in it? I like it either way, savory or sweet. If mm -hmm. it's savory, then yeah, butter and and sugar. Uh, otherwise, uh, butter with uh, some thin ham and some pickles and some garlic powder. It's good stuff. Or just butter. I'll just or just plain butter. Just, honestly, yeah, I'll just butter it, roll it, and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Let for for those that don't know, lefsa is essentially flour, butter, and potato. Mm -hmm. It's and a little bit of salt, but that's really the the only ingredients. And um, mm, you like cream, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some half and half. Yeah. Yeah. And so you you uh, you rice the potatoes. Uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of that before, but you rice the potatoes, which is like turning the potatoes into like a. a <laughs> it, well, you're not mashing them. No, that's the difference. Right, right. If you mash them. That the potatoes broken down too much. You can't have it broken down that much. Yeah. And so we 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 really take our lefts extremely seriously. And so you know we've got it down to to a science, and it has to be done like a certain a certain way. You know. Nice. Well, and if you think about so those who don't know what rising potatoes is, if you remember that play doh toy where right. you put the play doh in and you that's squeeze very good. It yeah, that's that's yep. pretty much what thing, it's like. Yeah. And it's all the you know you get like these little strings. Potatoes don't string out like the Play-Doh does. It it breaks apart in these little chunks, but that's essentially what yeah. rising potatoes is. Yeah, it's still got a little texture to it. Yep. Right. Um, yeah, I it's Norwegian tortillas is is <laughs> yeah exactly how we say it. Um, and we we love them. We haven't we haven't made them. 
uh, actually our family has never made them from scratch um we do have um some some uh older family members that do make them from scratch but it's uh you're totally right it's a ton of work but of they're work. so delicious um garrett do you have anything a little off the wall i'm sad to say it well yeah um uh, i guess this is weird we um so uh on christmas day so we all of family stuff happens on christmas eve for some reason and christmas day we do our at home stuff and then we have dinner at this 24 hour burger joint that's open uh, in the Twin Cities. And we'll go and have uh, a Christmas dinner at this greasy spoon kind of place and uh, and have burgers. Nice. Um, uh, and the reason that I actually put this question on the list is because I'm one of those like I don't have one of those things. We are like so super traditional, like it it's there's nothing sort of out of the ordinary or or uh, at least for, you know, what you typically see on the, you know, the the Christmas movies and, and that kind of thing. It's we we stick to, you know, a lot of traditions. We we have uh, we have a house full of family and, you know, we have the gifts and we have the big meals and and the drinks and the um, and all that stuff. Um, we're pretty, pretty straightforward with our Christmas, but we love every second of it, honestly. Um, so let's, uh, now Tanner said, hide the pickle. Yeah, that's fun. And well, that, we, 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 we do that one too. We, we do, do that. that and, and for those of you who, um, have horribly disgusting minds, hide the pickle is you, uh, the night before Christmas, you Nothing have to do pickle. with the condom eggnog situation. <laughs> exactly. Uh, or shake weights. You take uh, there's a pickle ornament and uh, you guys may do it differently. But the the night before Christmas, um, we have this pickle ornament. And when, you know, when Santa puts all the presents under the tree, uh, a pickle ornament is hidden in the branches. And the first kid to find the pickle ornament gets the first gift of Christmas. Is that how you guys do it, too? Well, we have, we have like a special present. It's yeah, it's like a separate present that you get later on that night. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, ours is ours is Similar. like first first present. And then don't ever get into the elf on the shelf thing because <laughs> then you got to be hiding this elf. You give yourself a chore the entire month long. You come we've, up with new creative ways to hide the stupid elf every day. We do we do elf on the shelf. His name is Chip and he is a sneaky little rascal. I like Elf in the Fireplace. (laughs) (laughs) It's the newest Quentin Tarantino (laughs) movie. (laughs) Elf in the Fireplace. I like it. Uh, Well, uh, guys, thank you for wait, wait, wait. We got we have two things. We have two things for you guys. Uh oh. Yeah, we do. Do it. Uh, All right. So, uh, first thing we're gonna do for you guys is we have this. We have this deck. It's called Pod Decks. We by the way. They do not sponsor us in any way. They just, I got this thing and they sent it to me. So I, we always ask our guests one of these questions. So we have quite a bit of them left. And here's the thing. When we ask you guys this question They're tonight, guests, what? They're not our guests. Well, you know. I know it's close enough. <laughs> when we, when we ask you guys this question, we will burn this card. Literally we'll burn it. It will never be asked again to anybody that we know. And so I'm going to let Jordan pick the card, and then you guys get to each answer it. I'll let Jordan uh, read it to you. Some of these are very weird and hard to answer, but this is the first our first thing for you two. Okay. Right on. Love it. If there was a sandwich named after you, what would, it, <laughs> what would be on it? Uh, <clears throat> huh. <laughs> There was a sandwich. Well, uh, bacon. It's got to have bacon. Oh, yeah. Um, I would say I'm going to go with uh, bacon, aged cheddar, um, and then a uh, spicy smoky chipotle mayo or aioli if you're feeling fancy. A Garrett's Ooh. sandwich sounds pretty good. Sounds good. I might that order sounds, that. That sounds very good. I might I might order that. All right, Matt. Um, all right, so 
uh, grilled sourdough bread, uh, sliced brisket, um, probably also like an aged Gouda or cheddar, um, Mm -hmm. bacon, uh, those, those, uh, crispy fried onion straws. Oh yeah. You have to have those on every sandwich. And, (laughs) um, like also like a spicy garlic mayo kind of thing on there. Now yeah, they they actually I'd what, eat either of those. What they what they how they answered that question was sort of different than I imagined. I imagined that you'd answer the question, you know, if you had a sandwich named after you or you know, like for me, I'd say bologna, you know, because I'm full of bologna. Hey. I, I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't I don't like bologna. I'm just saying like that would probably be, you know. So I was I'm surprised that they took it so seriously. <laughs> It's great. Well, if the if if we're gonna go literal, then my my sandwich would would basically be white bread with lard <laughs> and broadleaf. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Yeah. Uh, no. Good job, boys. Uh, our second thing that we had for you guys is, uh, hey, you know, there's there's a lot of you know cigar personalities out there in the world, and um, some of them are more pleasant to deal with than others. And, uh, you know, Jordan and I just want to tell you guys how much we appreciate you guys. And the Cigar Dojo it has this positive vibe that we've always tried to, you know, perpetuate over the years. And your show and what you guys do um, really means a lot to us because you guys have the same sort of feel and and that we do and 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 we just want to tell you guys how much we appreciate the effort that you guys put into the industry because um you know guys come and go um some of them like to be abrasive and cause trouble to get attention and you guys have never done that and um we just want to tell you guys personally how much we appreciate the the tact and the approach that you guys have taken to the industry and how much that you guys add to it. When we hung out with you guys at TPE last year, um, you know, we worked together, we had fun, we, we, you know, helped each other when we could. And, and that sort of stuff just means a lot to us. And we just want to say thank you guys so much for, for what you guys do because it, you, you guys are doing it the right way. And we really do appreciate all the effort that you put into this. So thank you guys very much for having us on the show and also just being, guys that are a positive influence on the cigar industry. We hope that someday when this is all over and people think back on, you know, what we did, they'll think the same way about us that we try to be a positive influence on the industry. So thank you guys very much. Wow. Well, and that means thank a you. lot coming from, from you guys. It really does. Yeah. Um, you're a standard that I think um, if anybody's smart in the media business looks up to you guys for, um, for for that uh, bar that's been set and uh Thank you. we're yeah no we're we're grateful for you guys for being a part and always being helpful and anytime that we call you guys for uh help advice all of that you know um it's been nothing but love and yeah that's why i love this industry so much from you know uh from the cigar industry itself to media um and you guys are certainly the the uh the gold standard that that we hope to attain to yeah now on the flip side matt every time you ask us to be on the show one of us has COVID, so please stop asking us to be on the show (laughs) (laughs) i will never stop asking you guys to be on the show ever and i am cheating i am cheating i switched to bourbon i just man I'm, Good man. I just switched to bourbon. I poured some old Forester <laughs> bottled in bond. Um, no, I, 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 I'm grateful to you guys. Um, I, I, I don't want to get in the weeds, but um, we love you guys, and it's from the heart, and we, uh, we appreciate everything you said, and we yep. strive to live up to it every day. So thank you. And yep. you guys do a great Absolutely. job, man. Seriously, thank you. Um, so Jordan, actually, this is the first time that 
you know, Jordan has been on the show. The you know, the couple times before that Eric was on the show, Jordan was in the, you know, off producer. camera in the in the producer's chair. And nice oh, but be before, <laughs> but before we go any further, I want to give a quick shout out to uh Justin Lawler, who's our new team member here at How About That Cigar. He's All right. Cheers. producing the show and um doing some work on the website and he is under the weather tonight as well and he is not actually uh with us in studio so um jordan here's to you brother we hope you get well soon and uh thanks for all your work and mm -hmm. cheers to you um uh, but we have some <clears throat> um well actually i think before we get into that i think so do you think it's time i, I think so all right it is now time for this week's numero, numero de, de los muertos, muertos. And as always, Numero de los Muertos is brought to us by our friends at Smoke In. What do you have for us this week, Garrett? Well, this week is a, oh gosh, this is fun. So between 2006 and 2019, seven people died from this in the U.S. Between 2006 and 2019, mm -hmm. seven people in the U.S. died from this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. As always, viewers, if you guys have guesses, put them in the comments. Uh, Eric and Jordan, we're going to play 20 questions and try to decipher okay. the numero de los muertos. John, uh, Quint, Quentin uh, just guessing. <laughs> vending machine fall, fell over on some Ooh, impression. that's a good one. That's a very good one. It is a good one. It was one of the first I did. We actually did that one early. Oh, really? What? Yeah. And uh, you'd be shocked to know that it, it takes the lives of about 10 people every year. In the wow. U.S. Oh goodness. Okay, uh, I'll go next. Um, uh, how about amusement park deaths? <laughs> We're going specific. Yeah. It is not amusement park deaths. <sighs> it is not putting up Christmas tree lights or Christmas lights. It's not icicles. Um, oh, that it's not going down one. a chimney. Are they? Are they workplace accidents? <laughs> it's interesting. Oh, so me. so oh, I I get what we're trying to do. Like, yeah, we're, yeah, we're trying to hone it down. I went yeah. more specific. Just, so did I. Just for fun. Okay, all right. Get all that right. out of the way. Right. Yeah, um, we can we can narrow it down. Okay. So in the general sense, no, but for these people, it is. Wait, wait. Well, what did Matt say? He asked if it was a workplace accident. And, so and, and he is. said in the general sense, no. No, oh. but for these particular people. It is, which makes me say yes. Right. It is. Technically, it is, yes. Um, Mark Vanderslight is actually uh, the closest if if we had those today. Centenarians? I don't know. I that think. Is. Well, is that, pe is that people who are 100 years old? Oh, I think. Oh, centenarians. <laughs> Never mind. Isn't that what I, that yeah, is? I, I read it as centurions. But <laughs> oh. Centurions. <laughs> It's a uh, gladiator. Oh, yeah. so maybe it has something right. to do with, maybe it has something to do with like, uh, Kurt Russell. No, <laughs> you know, like people, Kurt Russell, that, Russell what's, Kurt what's Russell. that? Russell, <laughs> Kurt Russell. I get the trouble in little China. Maybe <laughs> people that Alec Baldwin killed. Oh, could it be that? Are no. you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, what's that one festival, you know, like, oh, they, they get together, you know, and it's like down in Castle Rock and they're smelly. What's the name of that festival? It's the, it's the, uh, you know, they, they, Burning they do, Man? No, they do like uh, Everyone has jousting. It, you know. They do all like, oh, oh, the Renaissance, Renaissance festival. festival. Renaissance Festival. Does it have to do with the Renaissance Festival? It does not. Oh, God. Is so it related close. to winter? It, it, it does not. It's not related to winter. Is it a virus or a sickness? No. 
are vehicles involved? No. Um, again, Mark this time is actually closer with his guess, his last guess, which was WWE. Oh, so, so uh, f- boxing. Nope, not boxing, okay. but you're getting there. A- a- uh, mixed martial arts. It is MMA fighters. It's wow. MMA fighters. Yeah. So that between means- what years again? 2006 and 2019. Seven, seven fighters, fighters have fighters died. Have died in the ring. It like well, that, during a it? professional Correct. ticketed fight. Yes. Wow. Well, and Conor McGregor killed his career, so that was add, <laughs> add one. <laughs> add one Ew. to that. <laughs> <laughs> MMA. Wow. Who'd have thought that many have died? I know. Well, like you know, no matter what you're doing, somebody's somebody's gonna die doing it. You know, hundred percent. If yeah. And, have you guys tried his uh, speaking of Conor McGregor? Have you tried Proper Twelve? No, but I heard it's terrible. Yeah, it, I, and I'm not a I'm not a big fan of Irish whiskey in general. It's just not my preferred style of whiskey. I've only had one or two ever that I've actually enjoyed. But Proper Twelve is straight piss. It's <laughs> did vile. You, Matt, did you see the video of Conor McGregor in that bar? And he's trying to give it to some old guy. Yeah. And the old and the old guy just kind of like, get that out of my face. And Conor McGregor like punches him in the face. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. He's a terrible person. He is a douche. I'm he's pretty sure that uh, that fella at the bar got himself a nice fat payday. Yeah. Out of that. yeah. It was worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think he's overrated as an MMA fighter, Tony. I think I think he he's was, a talented fighter. He's an incredible fighter, but his moment, but, top shelf asshole. Yeah. Right. yeah. Or bottom shelf, depending or, on how you depending wanna, on how you rank your yeah. your assholes. <laughs> it all shelf. depends. It's your choice. It's your choice. Yeah, you put them on your shelf. So that was this week. Did we get it? Did we? Uh, was that? Yeah, we got it. it, was, it was, I mean, did we get it under twenty? Oh yeah, we only did like seven. Oh yeah. Answers. Yeah, no problem. We were yeah, we throwing some stuff out there for a second. We got we got it, and like we had like oh, thirteen yeah. to burn. <laughs> we could have said like you know oh, somebody please. cartooning no we could have thrown some stuff in there and we still would have got it making lefsa yeah that's uh, at least four or five people have died from that i'm sure in i'm the sure ring. in history yeah, yeah. to clarify tony was talking about the whiskey is overrated uh, oh the whiskey oh, okay yes i yes agreed 100 percent. oh yeah that's highly true. overrated but that's true with most celebrity liquors yeah about, why why about, is uh, that Ryan why reynolds how about Ryan Reynolds gin? Has anybody had that no, AD, never had aviation? It. What about uh, um, Ryan ever? Cranston and um, what's his face that played Jesse? They have a they have a not tequila, they a have mezcal. A mezcal, yeah. Yeah, it's supposed yeah, to be good. I, it's supposed to be good. Nobody's had it. No, no. I tried uh, I tried the Rocks tequila and it's it's very underwhelming. <laughs> it's just it's okay. Um, okay at best right not not really for me speaking of jesse we've got this friend of ours aaron the uh guy that plays poker olsen yeah oh, aaron olsen he does a great jesse impression oh does he yeah yeah he bitch. just says bitch a lot yeah nice. yeah bitch. <laughs> but he just he has the voice down and everything and it's great all right sorry nice. that was my rabbit hole. so that was this week's numero de los muertos <laughs> Okay, so moving into the lightning round. So we talked about this a, a second ago. I, I started going into it, and then I realized we had to get to numero. Um, so, Jordan, you've not had the lightning round questions before. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so Eric, since you've had the lightning round questions, this time we're just going to give these questions to Jordan. Okay, after you fill up, um, I have to get some butane anyway. So, Jordan. Yeah, right on. <laughs> yeah, that's totally cool. That's totally cool. And, it can only uh, last like 45 minutes. <laughs> I don't know how we do a show on a weekly basis. <laughs> so uh, the lightning round is brought to us by our newest sponsor, and that is LM Cigars. They've been offering extraordinary cigars at an exceptional value since 1876. On top of premium cigars, LM Cigars offers deals on many accessories, such as lighters, cutters, and humidors from the biggest brands in the industry at prices that can't be beaten. If you're an avid smoker or just starting out, LM Cigars 
has a cigar that will suit your needs. They have everything from value to premium cigars, flavored and unflavored. From Nicaragua to the United States, their extensive selection offers an option for every type of cigar enthusiast. For more information, please visit lmcigars.com or follow them on Facebook and Instagram at lmcigars. And don't forget, guys, this giveaway that you see on the screen right now is still live for the next week. So go to howaboutthatcigar.com and uh, it'll be one of the first posts that you see on the site for the December 2021 giveaway. Click on that link and fill out all the details to be entered into the giveaway. So, Jordan. Some good butane. Good butane. Oh, we got you. Smooth. Smooth. <laughs> Smooth. Uh, all right. So, Jordan, if you could hear the thoughts of one living person for 10 minutes, who would it be and why? Uh. That, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of the point. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, maybe maybe be Joe Biden, so you could just get some sleep. Yeah, maybe nothing. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, get end some of sleep. well, you you just constantly hear end of message, end of <laughs> yeah. message, end of maybe, message. Maybe my maybe my, my, my dad. Oh, <laughs> oh. wow! So I could know. I can know if I'm really living up to his expectations. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to have a Dr. Phil moment. Oh. <laughs> All right. Hug it out, guys. Hug it out. Uh, All right. Is that your answer? That's a great answer. If that's it. Seems good to me. Right on. <laughs> I love it. So, Jordan, if you were about to get into a fight, what would your soundtrack music be? Oh, man. Um, it's got to be like some sort of Beastie Boys. Oh yeah, song. Please say sabotage. Yeah, that, that's where I was going with that. Oh, ah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, such a great song. Sabotage. Gosh, or fight for your right. There was Ooh. a, there was a time. They all work really. They when, do. When I was um the first house my wife and I bought, and I was finishing the basement, and when I was mudding and sanding the the mud on the sheetrock i had beastie boys on repeat for like days <laughs> it was nothing fantastic. like a good house project no communication it was fantastic it was it was everything oh, okay up to that date it was everything and it was yeah that's what i needed just to because you, you're sanding sanding that and it just Pulse gets out all the aggression hell yeah i love it girls girls <laughs> <laughs> Brass, all right monkey. so I think I know the I, I think I know the answer to this next one, but I have to ask anyway. So Jordan, choose one of the following. You could hit a home run as a starting pitcher. You could score a touchdown as a defensive lineman. You could score a goal in a hockey game as the goalie, or you could score a game a goal in a soccer game as the goalie. Oh, uh, well, the hockey ones it's too easy. Uh, <laughs> I've probably done that before. Uh, nice. You got. You gotta. You gotta realize yeah. he played hockey since he was right. This big. It's uh, yeah. I, I go the. I go the football one. That just fun. to break it up. Just yeah. Sh change it up a little bit. I mean, <laughs> nice. I, it really the real answer is the hockey one, of course. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to. I've, I've got to get give Eric one question. So yes. Um. By the way, I started my Don Carlos. So I had to get the Cameroon going. Oh, yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I was wishing every time the wheel was spinning, like, please give me Cameroon. Please yeah. give me Cameroon. Mm, so good. Um, so, Eric, if you were yes. suddenly a billionaire. Yes. What would be the first unnecessary thing you would spend some money on? Oh, I think about this all the time. The first unnecessary. Here's so here's the theory, right, Jordan? The theory is you're supposed to, if you win a lottery or something like that, you're supposed to. If you don't splurge, you're gonna you're gonna spend it all. You're right. You should splurge a little bit at the beginning. And Step so, one: hire a tax attorney. Yeah. Step oh. two. So I think I would buy a Dodge Challenger Hellcat. Oh, well, you yeah. still can. <laughs> I would. I would. And here's my thought: I would get a Dodge Challenger Hellcat, and then I would also get a 1970 Challenger restored in the same color. So like I have one of the actual. 
Challenger, the 1970 Challenger, and then I have a Hellcat in the same color in the garage, just sitting next to one another. That nice. would be the first thing I do if I had a billion dollars. Daddy bull and baby bull. That is yep. fantastic, Got it, baby. You know, when Got I was it. in when I was in high school, my <laughs> I'm, I'm putting more nerd cred on myself right now, but my high school band director was a Camaro nut. And he had a 68 Camaro that he restored himself mm. right after he finished college. And he had the same, so this was the mid eighties. So he had the same color. It was the, the white Camaro with the blue dual oh, yeah, yeah. stripes. Like a Shelby and he, looking. Yeah. And he had the same color scheme Camaro in a brand new, like 1985 or 86 Camaro. That's sweet. That's, so, a, that's, and that's he, a good strategy. And even to this day, he's, he's, uh, I see him on Facebook every once in a while. And so about every five or six years, he trades in his Camaro, uh, his newer one, and he gets the latest model that's in the same color scheme as his old 68. And he's still got the 68 in the garage and still drives it, you know, every once in a while. So I, I love, I, I love that idea of having the new and the old. Mm -hmm. right next to each other in the garage that's a very oh, cool yeah that would yeah. be sweet like, then, like then i then like i have that out of my system you know i'd have that out of my system and so then after yeah. that i could I, I wouldn't be so crazy with my money i'd get that mm -hmm. one that one crazy thing out of the way yeah yeah like a you know 2001 prius and then like a 22 <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah totally or the yugo the oh yeah Get yeah, the, get them right side by side. Yes, awesome. Um, all right, so let's move into this week's notable smokable. And notable smokables are brought to us by our friends at Ace Prime Cigars. Notable cigars, notable passion, notable purpose. So, guys, each week we name a cigar that we smoked recently that was notable to us. It could be a cigar that's been on the market for decades that we just tried again for the first time in a long time, or it could be something that's very new to the market that we've been enjoying lately. So Jordan, what's something that I know you've kind of getting over the six, but yeah. something recently you've had yeah, that just I, sticks out in your mind. A few weeks. Um, the, for me, it's that it's gotta be that, uh, Ferio Tego Generoso by Michael Herklotz. That thing was insane. Lights out. One of the best cigars I've had in recent memory in the past, even a few years, I'd say. Nice. What just, about you, Eric? A uh, quick shout out to my buddy, Connor Booth in, uh, Pennsylvania, just real quick. He uh, he said hi on there. Oh, I want right to say on. hi to Connor Booth. Good dude. Uh, I would go the same thing, except I'm going to go the Elegancia. Oh, I'm going to go the Ferio Tego Elegancia. Both of those cigars are fantastic. Um, I might have picked the Generoso, but Jordan picked it, so I'll go with the Elegancia. It burns a little too quick, maybe, but the flavor is outstanding. Super good. Michael Herklotz nailed it on both of those cigars. Congrats to him because that those are that's they're just a, pricey, but uh, you know they're worth it. They are good, man. And it was it was a long wait. We never thought they'd come out, but uh, good good on him. He took his time and came out with two fantastic cigars. Yeah. Well, thank you for stealing <laughs> choice one and choice two, guys. Uh, I'm I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna double down on the Generoso because that cigar. Oh, so um, good. I, I mean, I, I couldn't believe what I was smoking and it was, um, I didn't expect it. Number one, I knew it was going to be a good cigar, right? Um, anything Herc was going to do and put out is, you know, it was going to be great, but I wasn't expecting, you know, anytime you're buying, uh, 18, 19, 20 plus dollar cigar, you're like, is this going to be worth, you know, a $20 cigar? And you're kind of coming into it like, you know, the cigars got to prove it to me. Yeah. Within an inch, I was like, I want to rub this on my body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that got weird. That got oh, really yeah. weird. That got really no, weird. You should have been in the cigar bar. People were looking <laughs> like it was. Garrett, people are starting to stare. <laughs> yeah. No, it, that cigar, you guys, is phenomenal. So phenomenal. I'm, I'm going to keep that. That's awesome. Phenomenal. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I also have uh, 
that one on my list, but I'm going to, I wrote on my notes, I'm going to diverge. Uh, and I had, I, I have had this cigar earlier in the year, but I smoked another one last week. Uh, and that is the home 2021 from dissident. Um, I had, had another one of those a couple days ago and I just really enjoy the blend. It's super powerful. Uh, it burns really well. Uh, a lot of good flavors. So, uh, and, and they're still, you know, super limited edition, but I, I still, I've seen a few places that still have some, uh, available. So I, I recommend it. I think it's a, a nice cigar. Um, so that was, uh, this week's notable smokables, uh, to give our viewers and listeners an idea of some cool stuff we have coming up next week, uh, which is the 20th of December. We have our year in review. Uh, and this is just, uh, the show at the end of the year where we go through the box of bands and look at stuff we've been smoking a lot over the, the course of the last year, uh, talk about some of the cool stuff that's happened in the industries, people we had on the show, um, and revisit some of the cool moments from the cigar world in, in 2020. Um, then we're going to be off for the week of Christmas and then we will be back on January 3rd for cigar of the year. So January 3rd will be our cigar of the year show. Uh, and then we have uh, Abe Debabna coming back on in January, and we have some other cool guests coming up in the uh, you know in the coming weeks as well. Yeah, and so. say, uh, that's January tenth. We've got Abe coming on. You guys are going to want to tune into that because he is giving away a trip to the Great Smoke. So a ticket, a ticket to the show. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a blast. Yeah, going to be a good time. Um, are, you, are you guys going to the Great Smoke? I will be there. Nice. Be there. Oh. We will see you there. That's fantastic. Um, so, uh, guys, give us an idea of some stuff you have coming up on Smoke Night Live, on Flavor Odyssey, um, that kind of thing. All right. So, uh, Wednesday, uh, Flavor Odyssey continues with our pre mixed cocktail segment. That's four weeks of uh, pre mixed cocktails. Last week, we did the uh, Cutwater Mai Tai. And this week, we're doing the surprisingly good uh pre-made ready to drink margarita from costco which is oddly pretty stinking best good I've found so uh but it's for a margarita yeah but at the same time as both garrett and matt know uh a margarita is a tricky pairing for cigars so uh yeah. we'll see who does the best there whether it be uh robbie or randy or jordan or myself but uh mainly robbie or randy will be trying to Find the best printing for that on uh, Smoke Night Live Friday night. Uh, we'll have Robert Caldwell and supposedly Tony Bellotto. Although, I don't know, the last time we did this, Tony Bellotto was so hammered. <laughs> if, if you go back and watch the show with Tony Bellotto the last time, he was so incredibly hammered. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was an incredible show. Uh, but anyways, we'll see if Tony Bellotto shows up. Um, and then the week after that, uh, Jack Hire will be in town. We'll do a Christmas show, but we'll have to do that one on Thursday because uh, Christmas Eve is on Friday. So we're going to move our show to Thursday, have a little Christmas episode with Jack. That's the, uh, I guess that's the 23rd, right, Jordan? Supposedly. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, that's what's According coming up. Science. That's what's coming up on uh, those shows. That's awesome. And uh, we're just grateful again to have you guys on and uh, continuing this experiment, this uh, pairing roulette experiment. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and uh, we had I think we had some uh, some interesting pairings, even if we didn't have any uh, award winners tonight. So thank you guys so much for being on episode 138. Uh, like like we've said already, man, we 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 love and respect what you guys do, uh, and we we love watching Smoke Night Live. We love watching Flavor Odyssey and learning from you guys, and uh, continued success in the future. Have a fantastic close to uh 2021 a uh, fantastic christmas season for you and your families and we will talk to you guys again soon thanks boys thanks, guys awesome. all right so all our viewers and listeners guys you are the best part of how about that cigar thank you so much for watching if you're listening after the fact on the audio podcast we're grateful that you took some time to listen with us uh follow us on all social media at hbt cigar if you have questions email us on the website how about that cigar.com and until next time, burn cigars, not bridges. See you guys. Thanks, everybody.